Peace, everybody. Welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch, and today we're going to recap last night's wild, crazy UFC 279, which happened in uh, Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena. Now, hopefully you all watched the preview video. I'll link it uh, to this video. But my brother Rob broke down what we expected to see based on the changes that happened Friday afternoon to the main card. Uh, he broke all that down, why it happened, um, what led to it, and, and the new card. So we're going to break down, you know, what happened based off of those predictions and those changes that happened. So um, we, we ended up with a very entertaining card. Um, so that was a good thing. You know, it looked to be entertaining in the beginning. The changes made for, you know, more intriguing matchups. And we got some wild, some wild action uh, last night. Uh, shout out to uh, Arena Aldana, who got a body up kick finish on uh, Macy Jason, which was, uh, that was a great fight between those uh, ladies at 140 pound catch weight. We had a lot of catch weight fights last night also, which we got action. We got some technique. Can't be mad at it. So um, into the main fights. So we know that based off of the wildness that Rob broke down last night, instead of Hamza Shemaya facing Nate Diaz, we had Nate Diaz facing Tony Ferguson and Hamza Shemaya facing Kevin Holland in a another catchweight fight at 180 pounds. And let's start with that one. So Rob, you know, talked about both of their striking prowesses and also the ace in the hole that Chemayev had with his wrestling that would probably lead him to the victory. Um, now, personally, you know, when we were talking about it beforehand, I wasn't really thinking about uh, Chemayev's wrestling. We don't really have a lot of long-term footage of Chemayev outside of the Gilbert Burns fight. Not his fault. He's been buzzsawing through people. And also you hear things in the gym about like stories. But a lot of times, you know, that could or could not translate into the octagon or ring, whichever, you know, you compete in. However, you know, this one, when, when Rob mentioned the wrestling, I was like, oh, yeah. Every, every person that Holland has lost to has been because of wrestling. He should do that. Like immediately. And not only did he do it, he did it in spades. He literally mauled Kevin Holland and ended up with a Darce Choke submission on a Jiu Jitsu black belt. So that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, a lot of people made uh pointed out the tactical mistake that Holland did going for a glove touch when they started the fight. And, and we've seen that happen on several occasions where, you know, guys are thinking, hey, let me go touch gloves. The ref asks you to touch gloves before you guys come out for round one. You don't need to do it again. You you can, you know, some a lot of people do it, but that's the time you touch gloves. When they say fight, go fight. Um, most famous uh, glove touch guffaw is definitely uh, Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz. And Victor Ortiz ended up being knocked out because, you know, Mayweather did not want to touch gloves with him after they said fight. And at this one, Kevin Holland goes to, you know, tap gloves. Chemayev immediately goes for a power takedown and ragdolls him. I, I said he mauled him earlier. He ragdolled him like any. He manhandled him. All of those adjectives worked for what Chemayev did to Holland. And, you know, Holland, to his credit, tried to defend. He tried to get up on several occasions, but Shemaev was just too much. And he locked in that choke. He escaped it a few times. Shemaev would lock it right back in, got the submission. Very unprofessional on the weight thing. Uh, Business-wise, you know, they, they did some... They It ended up working out in our best interest, but it, it was very shady because... Not many people would get that same treatment had they done the same error. And that is 
the privilege you have of being a cash cow and being someone that people want to see. You get those allowances that other people don't get. That's life. A lot of people will say, that's not fair. And it's not. But that's how it is. So, Shemaev now, if he couldn't make 170 this time, he comes in a full newborn baby, overweight, uh, for this fight. Does he fight at 170 anymore? Does he go up to 85, where it seems he would be more healthy? If the weight cut was that bad, that they told him to stop, but then they had, you know, they, they had conflicted stories on what happened. It doesn't matter. He was overweight. When he was contracted, he agreed to come in at 170, and he didn't. So is it because he can't do it, or did, you know, there was some lapses in preparation? We may never know, but I think we're all excited to find out, and um, he definitely went full heel with that uh, with that post-fight uh, with the post fight interview, um, not mad at it as much as people down sports entertainment, professional wrestling seems that every mixed martial artist and boxer, uh, I should say combat sports athletes, cause it's not just those two sports that's doing it. Everybody has those characters that they have been influenced by sports entertainment, by professional wrestling. And they are getting popular doing it. I was a huge pro wrestling fan as a kid, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, but we also cannot put them down and then steal their moves. That's all I got to say about that. Let's talk about that main event. Tony Ferguson, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz's last hurrah in the UFC. Maybe. Uh, this is the last fight on his contract. Tony Ferguson on a four-fight skid. Uh, Diaz coming off the loss to uh, Masvidal and um, Leon Edwards. And we got the bloodbath that Rob said that we would get. Uh, Tony Ferguson cut up, bloody, had blood pouring out of his shin. It, it, was, it was pretty gruesome looking. But... Tactically, he was using that bloody shin to tear Nate Diaz's leg up. He That was the most effective strike that Tony Ferguson had uh, last night. Uh, Diaz was able to get a lot of good varying hooks and, and punches. He showed that stand-up boxing striking skill that he has. And he's also been a primary sparring partner for uh, multi-division Hall of Fame boxer Andre Ward. So his hands are nothing to sneeze at. And he showed that. Also, we had a battle of two jujitsu black belts who were very, very good. And, uh, you know, Rob said that the ground game probably favored Diaz. And we were correct. Um, Tony Ferguson's corner told him, hey, man, you got to get a takedown. You got to get a takedown. And as soon as he went for that takedown, Diaz grabbed that neck and made him submit with a vicious guillotine choke. One thing that did uh, confuse me in the fight was I want to say it was in the third round where Diaz is like walking away from Ferguson. And he's shaking his head. No. Um, and it happened after one of those leg kicks. I'm thinking he's he's giving up for the night. Like he's like, all right, I'm done. I, I can't I can't take this anymore. I'm good. And the rest like fight, fight. He's like, no. And he's walking away. He is very lucky that the ref did not stop that fight. Had that been probably somebody less famous, he stops the fight. He pretty much verbally, like, you know, he did his antics every now and then. But to a, you know, person that's a little less known or like, you know, someone who doesn't know how Diaz operates, they probably stop that fight and they wouldn't be wrong in doing so. So, like I said, he was very lucky. And that's the second part of that, you know, popular person privilege that other fighters wouldn't get. Um, because that, that definitely looked like he, he could have been given up at that point. And had the ref decided, hey, okay, you say no. I told you to fight. You said no. 
fight's over. You lose via TKO. Probably would have made a lot of people upset, but all the signs up to that point pointed to that could have happened. So he's lucky that it didn't. And he got to go out on a big win. Unfortunately for Tony Ferguson, this is his fifth straight loss. Now, he's lost to the top of the divisions that he's lost to. And in Diaz's case, one of the most famous fighters in the promotion, in the sport, period. So I think he'll get one more shot. Um, and as Rob said, he, he thought that Diaz would be faster than Ferguson and, and be able to tag him often. And he was right on that. Um, Diaz was the sharper puncher. Diaz was the fresher guy. Um, Tony did look out of sorts in, in many spots in that fight, though he had the success with the leg kicks. So let us know what you think about the fights last night. Um, how did you think? What tactics were really good? What tactics do you think, you know, may have been a mistake? You know, um, do you think that takedown was ill-advised of uh, the, the Ferguson camp or did Ferguson not do it correctly, which led to the uh, to the guillotine choke. Let us know in the comment section. Make sure you hit us up on social media, Capital Combat at uh, all social media platforms that we are on, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. And make sure you hit that subscribe, icon, uh, subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't yet. And make sure you catch both Rob and I's videos as we post separately and together. And we hope to see you all in the next video. Till then, fight on.